Hello MacWarriors and welcome to a new episode of the Build of the Week. So, Rosalind Snow wanted to see a Ryan build. And Rosalind, this one is for you and all the other guys out there. Uh, we are going to do some Orion brawling today with exploding SRM fists. Okay, what do we need for this? First of all, of course, an Orion. So, I picked the Orion ON1BA because he has very, very good quirks on the missiles. So, we have got 10% missile velocity, 25% cooldown, that is huge, and heat generation uh, on minus 10%. That's pretty good. Another good thing about the Orion ON1BA is that he has his four missile slots in the arms. So, we are very flexible and agile with our aim which helps a lot targeting weak spots on our enemies. As for the weapons, I went with four slm 4 and the Artemis guidance system. Artemis, of course, reduces the spread and therefore helps us focus our damage. On top of that, we have an LB-10X autocannon to give some more close-range punch without generating too much heat. And we've got two medium lasers for when we run out of ammo. The interesting thing about this build is that it runs with an XL340 engine. Yes, it's a bit risky because our side trousers are not that protected, but we really need that speed to close distance very fast. Our main weapons are the SRM-4s and they are limited to 270 meters, so with a bit of torso twist this should be fine. As for the modules, I went with Target Info Gathering, Advanced Seismic Sensor, SRM-4 Cooldown and yeah, you could also go for the SRM-4 Range module and most importantly um, two cool shots, because once we are in the brawl, we won't get out. Either we die or they do, and therefore cool shots come in very handy. A last quick side note before we begin. You can also play this build with SRM6 and without Artemis, but you spread the damage more and I personally don't like it. So if you want, you could go for it, but mm, I go for the SRM4 here. And as a little bonus, there are two games today instead of one, so I hope you enjoy it. So here we are on Polar Islands and I skipped forward a bit because I don't want you to see the whole boring walking into one direction thingy, you know? Um, okay, let's talk about the build a bit. As I said before, it is a um, pretty risky but a high rewarding build because we can deal a lot of damage with our SRMs. But we have to be patient very, very much. There is no point just walking into the face of the enemies with no cover or no teammates for backup. So what we are doing now is we stay behind and wait for the field to tighten up a bit. The only thing we can do now is shoot with our LB-10 at the moment. Um, yeah, it won't deal much damage, but at least a bit, and we've got 40 rounds to shoot. Mm, I think it's okay to give a shot here and there. But be sure to preserve some ammo for the brawl. You'll need to, I guess, 15 to 20 rounds um, for the late game. So you can fire half your ammo and well, maybe get some shots in. Also, it, it's good for getting assists. Yeah, let's get some Siebels here. If we can hit this. I did not. The only thing we can do now is just wait for our team to... Yeah, push a bit forward. And if they're not, we can always take initiative and, yeah, move slowly into position. Always have an eye on the minimap when you're doing so. Uh, you always want to make sure that your team is following. And, yeah, make a, make a break now and then so that everybody can follow up. The good thing is that our LIMs are already flying. That should weaken them up till we arrive. All right, our team is there and we can now set up to position for a good push. We want to get really close and then go for a quick sprint to close distance as fast as possible. By the way, if you are pushing hard in a brawl, you have a big psychological advantage. So keep moving, do not stop firing and stay in motion. Just don't stop. This is no stand and shoot build. We just want to go in and wreak havoc. That's what we are going to do now. So we have here our first target and we are unloading everything we have. And we are switching constantly between the SRMs and the LB-10. This gives some nice cockpit shake and makes most of the enemies run. So you see the Stormcrow is nothing. He's just trying to retreat and overheats and now he's dead. 
However, make sure that you don't go in alone. You always want your team as backup. As I said before, we have an XL engine and this is very squishy, so make sure that there is some cover or some friendlies between you and the enemy, if possible. If not, then just try to toss a twist your way out. So we are retreating here a bit, because uh, it's a bit too risky for me to go in there. But as you can see, our LB-10 is a nice barrage weapon. We can shoot it while advancing and until we get into rage for our SRMs. At this point of the game I've already fired my two cool shots and I have to be a bit more careful with my heat now. But as you can see, we, our team has already destroyed half of the enemy team and yeah, I just reboot and continue the shooting. I was pretty lucky that my team was also pretty brawlish and now we're just dealing with the rest of them. At this point they have nothing they can do. By the way, shooting at moving targets could be quite a bit of an issue with this build, but uh, just practice it. Practice the travel time of the projectiles and you should be fine. Okay, there are just two more enemies left and this marauder is just being torn apart. There's nothing he can do. And down he goes. Okay, last enemy. There he is, it's a cicada. And there's no point fighting for him anymore. So let's take him down really fast. Alright, we got that kill. So that was the first game. Let's have a look at the end screen till we jump into the next one. Okay, here it comes. Come on. Alright, 750 damage, 2 kills, 7 assists and 5 kill most damage dealt. You see, this is a very aggressive build which can deal a lot of damage in a very short period of time. However, you have to be a bit careful with it, so try to not get focus. Alright, that was the first game, so let's dig directly into the next one. And hey, we are in Polar Highlands again. This time though we are in the domination mode, which is not that good for our build, because um, yeah, we don't want to be in open terrain in the center of the map and uh, shoot at each other. This build, as I said, it really needs some cover and I guess we have to use our team for it now. So for the first phase of the game we are doing the exact same thing as in the other game. We are keeping our heads down and try to not get focused. But of course we can help destroying that little Jenna scout here. Whoops, I did not think that he would change direction. Yeah, but as you can see, we are always staying in the bulk of our team. We don't want to go alone, because if an enemy catches us, we are just food. What we can do is get some shots here and there with our LB-10, getting some assists, and... No, this is not a good idea. I have to retreat at this position. We are just not made for this. Um, we have to be very careful with our armor. We need as much as possible intact when we are going for a brawl, so let's not fool around and just do what we are meant to do. We just move forward now and get into position for the push. While advancing we can get some shots in, of course, but our main job is to be on the front line when our team arrives, so let's catch up with them. And it seems that we are hitting them right in the back. With the right timing we can make a lot happen here. Okay, we've got a dire wolf, that's a very good priority target for us, so let's get close and fire everything we have. See, he has basically nothing he can do. He has no backup and now there are 100 tons less on the battlefield. Very good job, team. However, their formation is very tight, so I'm not pushing forward anymore and wait for the rest of my team to arrive. In the meantime, we can tear this Nova apart. And here's the next kill. Okay, it seems that there's everybody here and we can move forward a bit. There are only two of us in the back and... Yeah, we've got some big dude as backup on our right. So let's get intimate. The Hunchback over there is already pretty damaged, but he is also wearing four SRM4s, which can deal quite a lot of damage, so I have to be a bit careful here. Let's take him down really quick and then retreat. Okay. Oh, he's doing a smart move here by jumping up, so my rockets miss. 
And he also managed to kill my LB10X. That's not good. I really needed that thing. So our side torso is open and oh I have to I have to torso twist here. Just retreat, let our team tank some damage, and maybe we can shoot from second line. So in this situation, survival is our highest priority. We don't want to draw too much attention, just get some shots in and then go out again. And always make sure that you are twisting your healthy part of the torso towards the opponent if you feel that you've got their attention. So we are going back again and let our team do the frontline job now. Let's get behind the friendly lines and shoot from second line. Yeah, that position is much better for us. Let's get in some quick damage and then twist our way out again. Okay. I think that worked out well. And I guess, yeah, there goes the last one and we won again. Very good job team, very good game. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This was great. Okay, let's see the end screen. Here it comes. Okay, only 500 damage this time, uh, but 3 kills, 7 assists, 2 kill most damage dealt and 9 destroy components. Yeah, worked out well in the end. Um, I hope you liked it. I like this build very much because sprawling is something that I really enjoy and maybe you want to give it a shot. See you next time. Goodbye.